Okay, uh, we're live. Yep, we're live. I mean, love addiction, uh, getting, uh, getting obsessed about a person, uh, it's, it's a vibration. It's a spiritual vibration and it's a thing of, it's all consuming. So remember, when you're, when you're spiritually connected, you know, when you're, when you're spiritually connected, it's always in the now. One is always in the now. There, it's like one is in the eternal presence. And there's no, th one is not heavily identified with thought. So one is not in the future or the past. And there is no craving for anything to take you out of just being present here and now. When there's something like love addiction, then it's like, you know, like I had food addiction, or if I had, would have love addiction, it would be like, there's like a constant yearning energy there's kind of like a, a needy energy and there's a thing of wanting that thing all the time you know so it's a different vibration it's a vibration of bondage you know it's a vibration of bondage you know like anyone who's in addiction is if you're in food addiction you're thinking about when you're going to get your hands on the next donut or piece of cake if you're on alcoholism even if you're here you're not really here because you're thinking when can you buy your next lager if you are in love addiction, then you wouldn't be really here because you'd be wanting to be back with your, your addictive person of choice, really. Because it's like life lights up when I'm eating a donut, but life is quite not really, you're not really living unless you're eating a donut. Or you're not really living unless you're drinking. Or you're not really living unless you're with that person, you see. So it's like you feel, so you become. You, you go into a field of bondage, you see, because the ego says you're only feeling whole and happy when there's union with the donut, with the alcohol, or with the individual. And life is a bit empty when you're not. And when you're strongly connected to God, when you're in the eternal now, every moment is complete uh, and joyful and connected. So each moment is enough. But when you're having this, so it's something within the ego which has a strong special significance, you see. So you have, like in terms of the Course in Miracles, you have to like de-specialize it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, so, uh, like I would do, like if I became love addicted with someone, I would maybe do the course, especially if I had a photo of them, I could like say, like have a photo of them and look and do the course lesson, one of the first early lessons. So look at the photo of the girl, and look at her for one second, she's meaningless. Then look at the light bulb for a second, the light bulb's meaningless. Then look at the plant for a second, the plant's meaningless. Then look at the, um, the mug for a second, the mug's meaningless. So as you do that, you're stripping away the projected meaning of that individual. And as you keep doing that, like a few times a day, you know, it's like your, your head, it'll start to take up that specialness of that, of that image. If, uh, if the love addiction is strong, uh, then the other thing to do is just to sit sometimes with the energy, the, vibe, the feelings. You know, it's like, um, say I, I'm, I'm feeling very, I'm having these strong feelings for this individual, because they're not here, and I can just sit down, close my eyes, and just feel the, allow the energy to be here, and not label, not make a story about it, and just feel it out until, until it's starting to dissolve. So that will take out a lot of the craving energy, which is activating all the thoughts and the need to be with that individual. Yes, we're on camera, but you can come Sorry. in. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, when, we, when we're cancelling a specialness, we're not actually can cancelling love. We're cancelling something mm -hmm. completely different. It's a projection of the ego mm -hmm. of love, which is, has nothing to do with real love. Right? Mm -hmm. no, that's a brilliant question. Yeah, a, question. a brilliant question. Thank you for asking. Yeah. That's such a wonderful question. So, Course in Miracles says we're, we're, we're releasing the blocks to love. Mm -hmm. And the blocks to love, uh, l love is all there is. But the ego makes it, uh, when you identify, the ego makes it about special love. It makes it about a love between a, a me and a you, which is special. So, as soon as the ego makes uh, the idea that I'm special and you're special and that we have a special love, then that is, uh, that is um, an ego bond which is limiting. 
So if I, if I believe myself is limited, if I experience myself as limited and I see you as a special limited person, then we have this special relationship, which is a limited, at best is a limited form of love, but if it's very strong, you could, you could call it addiction or very destructive. Mm. So it'd be like I'd be very controlling, you can't do this, you can't do that, I get very jealous, get very thing. Um, in places where people suffer from love addiction, they'll kill themselves. You say, if you leave me, I'll throw myself off the top of a roof because there'll be no point in living without you in my life. That's, so that's a form of anti-life. It's like the person becomes a drug and, uh, and they see there's no point in living because you're the source of life. So that's, whereas an enlightened teacher has true love, which is not, which is holy love, right, in terms of the course, or non-special love, or love in the, where they no longer experience themselves as a separated body or thoughts. They experience, they experience life as oneness, as being the eternal. So it's like, when you're identified with your thoughts and your body, it's like, if I was identified with my thoughts and my body right now, I'd feel like I'm a cloud in this area, and there's lots of other, I project there's lots of other clouds in the room because I identify as my thoughts and my body. But if I, if I release that identification, and I experience myself, then I'd be experience, experiencing self as being the sky, or the air in this room, or the space in this room. So there is not, not a separated me and a separated you. There's always the present moment, but there is no such thing as special love. And that's the maximum love, because the more you're identified with ego, it's more like there is limited love or addiction. And it's more like there's a state of oneness or holiness or limitless love or the state of love. It's like it's, ev it's ever present and it's constant. So as soon as you track into the ego, you get separate states of separated love, which are going down, depending on how special and how symbolic it is and how much repressed feelings, we're going from unconditional love, i.e. not even separated love or oneness, to uh, conditional, slightly conditional love, to addiction type thing of like life and death type of you're a drug kind of thing with super control. Animal. So th those kind of things are, yep. Yeah. No, I was about to say a very animal thing because uh, I definitely experienced that specialness around in the past. Yes. And I would project, I would be trapped in that illusion that my happiness would come from that projection from that specialness from that special relationship and that would breed resentment so much because I would get there and mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel that and I would get resentful at the person and this would create such a cycle of hate and addiction and you know mm -hmm. and it was crazy it was crazy I agree yeah it becomes very needy and desperate yeah. and controlling and manipulative uh, all the all those things, especially at the states of addiction. So, and it's really really nice to be around people who are more unconditionally loving and more laid back uh, in that way. So that's uh, that's a great a great question. Uh, on um, also, like um, I think a really w a good way to flip it around with love addiction is is to think about. Uh, Dr. Hugh Len. I love talking about, I've got some newcomers in. You know, people may know Dr. Hugh Len. So this was a guy, he talks about clearing the data, or clearing, clearing your perceptions. So, he had a, so uh, there was a uh, prison full of uh, criminals in Hawaii, and he got the files of all these people and forgave them, just from the files, and they all got well and got released. So you don't even have to meet them. You just clear, clear your data of what you see them. So if you just like clear your data of someone that you're love addicted to, that is the biggest act of love you can do for them and yourself because you, you clear away all the, all the limiting ideas and then they're likely to heal and you're likely to heal. So yeah, that's a short video. On, thanks for that question, that was a great question. Mm -hmm.